Hey everyone, welcome to Camp Patton Family Compounds Monday Night Fireside Chat. And tonight's topic is How is gas prices affecting your garden? All right, and let me get me up here. Did I, um, yes, I'm up here by myself. No one else has come in yet. But hey, I just uh, got done watching. Um, I was over at North Star Prepstetter, and she was going over Ireland today because St. Patty's Day is on Thursday. And she was covering a lot of stuff about potatoes, growing potatoes and stuff, and some of the stuff. It was a real cool live. But so uh, let's see who all's in here. Uh, first one in was Shady Hill Homestead. And then CR came in. That's Creative Redundancy. And then Uncle Al came in. Die Bull Frog 79. The Kraken's in the house. And Howie at Food Forest, Perma per blah, 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 blah. Food Forest Permaculture. I can just get my, my mind back on track here. And I froze. And then Ginger came in. Ginger Ninja. And everyone's talking there. And Rachel Knight's in the house. Hey, Rachel. All right. So... Tonight's is going to be an, kind of an open forum talk. So I'm doing a lot, you know, pulling a lot of stuff off the um, side chat here until, if, unless, you know, Courtney or um, Carol or Bruce come in. I, I've thrown out a bunch of things to just see who, who can make it in here tonight. Because this is, after the daylight savings time uh, goes into effect, it's brighter longer. So people are outside in the garden longer. So, yeah. But uh, so the question is, you know, how is this surge in gas prices going to affect your garden? And yeah, you know, so it's you know, everyone talks. Oh, we're only doing this percentage, that percentage. Why, well, you know, of, of uh, inflation? Well, I just got another one saying that in the last month it went up twenty-seven percent. All right, 27% is a heck of a lot in the last month. And I went up to uh, I went to um, Sam's Club today, and I what was for the uh, the 90% lean ground beef, what was 3.54 a pound is now four dollars a pound. So that went up, you know, 46 cents in two weeks. Hey, Stringfield Ridge Farm, how's it going? Oh, okay, so that went up there. Yeah. Yeah, I burn wood too. Um, that's the main, main source of heat. Um, I, you know, most of the lights I turn off, except for like when I'm doing the live stream, I have the bright light on so it makes the green screen work and everything right. Um, I'm only using lights in the rooms I need to be in. Hey, our tiny, uh, our tiny acres. How's it going? And, uh, it's, uh, yeah, you know, it's been slowly creeping up here, uh, a little bit here, but they, the real price change hasn't hit yet on the uh, bill. Probably won't hit until next month's bill. Hey, Anthony, how's it going? And so how is the how is the gas prices affecting your garden? Well, some, some of the key questions are, well, if price is going up, are you are you going to plant more of a garden? Are you going to expand your garden? Try to get more in the ground so you grow more food so you don't have to uh, make as many trips to the grocery store. That's one thing. And... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> CR, you'd be surprised that what people they have those rechargeable uh, lanterns. They put them outside and they bring them in just to have, just so they don't have to use the lights in the evening. Hey, Steve, Corsair trainers. Tell you what, guys, I um, I, I'm going to go ahead and drop this down in here. So, so Anthony, Steve, you guys want to come up and talk about? This um, this is just going to be an open chat type thing tonight. Everyone talking about um, how it's going to affect their garden. 
Uh, I do know that some of the people around here that use the tractors a lot, you know, the homeowners, not the big farmers, um, they're really thinking about how much they're going to be using their tractors because the price is, you know, basically it's it's almost doubled here in Idaho, the price for uh, gas. And so, um, yeah, you know, I, went, I stopped and I got gas at uh, Sam's Club while I was up there today. And it was um, it was almost the same price as the hamburger. It's a little bit more than the price of the hamburger. Hamburger was four dollars a pound. Uh, the gas was four oh six uh, per gallon, and that just jumped up, you know, you know, a lot here in the last couple of weeks. Ah, oh, you're at practice, Steve. Okay, that's okay. And uh, uh, okay. Our tiny acre says it's doubled here in Oregon too. Yeah, I mean it's just I last summer I was going back when I drove back to California. I had to I had to be all the gas stations marked out and checked on gas buddy and all the other stuff, and I was paying about uh, two thirty six a gallon. You know until I got to California. Once I got got to Cal, actually, when, once I got to Reno, it got it went up to uh, three twenty six a gallon. Excuse me. So um, yeah, it's you know it's gone up a bunch. Oh, Matt and Sarah, four nineteen a gallon in Minnesota. Oh, Howie's Howie's on top of it here though. Hey, Mary Beth Smith. Howie's tripled food production. Yes, LED lights going with all his hot weather crops. Yeah. Hey, Lewis. Lewis is in the house too now. And that's what I got for my indoor garden experience I started. I got LED lights. There's only one um, heat lamp that goes. And I only run it for about uh, I run it for about half an hour before uh, 7 o'clock because it's on the cheaper time. And I'll run it uh, for a half hour uh, once around noon. Just to keep that uh, the trace of uh, soil where I'm starting the uh, onions at to keep it warm and you know they're, get them sprouting and stuff. Uh, 429 in Georgia, Mary Beth Smith says, and that's that's one of the things that's going to affect me in a different way is I'm not probably not going to be making as many trips to California as I was planning to do. And so when I do make a trip there, I'll be bringing back all sorts of the starters. My wife is starting down there in pots and stuff and bringing it up here. Oh, Rachel, Rachel uh, said she paid $4.79. And for those, uh, and Anthony says it's that. And Steve, of course, they're trainers for his members only posted a let's see if i can bring if i can find it again here real quick go back to my email uh td where is it where is it where is it where is it um today's 14th it was i think it was today was it yesterday uh steve has a members only i'm, I'm one of the, part of them his members uh stuff he sent out a members only photo of the gas prices uh around where he's at and he, you know, that's what I think he's doing for his members. He's not putting it on the regular channel. Uh, I don't see it here. Oh, well, I'd have to, cause I delete, I delete the email afterwards. Oh, there, all right. Steve's sharing it. 569 near his house down there in LA, right? Is it near your house? Or was that down at uh farther, farther towards city center? So, but uh, yeah, um, you know, my wife said she saw one around up there in the San Francisco Bay Area for over seven dollars. I think it was seven seven oh nine, but that was for premium, and that's what she puts in her uh, Buick is premium. Hey, how to garden? How's it going? And so there, you know, if you, if you're using. If even all right, if you're using gas to go to the store, you're going to limit your number of trips to the store. And so, you know, expanding a garden is one way of doing that. Granted, uh, if you're going for fresh milk, you 
depends on how well your store stocks right. It depends whether or not you have to go every once a week or it can go every two weeks. I'm lucky Sam's Club up here, when they have, get the milk in, it's good out 18 days before you hit the best use by date. And I usually have it timed. I go up there, and that's what I did today. I went up and I got um, I got two gallons, and so that will last me two weeks. And then that, that's the next time I go into shop. So I'm not going to be driving my truck until two weeks from today. And that's the other thing, too. If, you, if you're out of the city a ways, it's a thing to get people together, you know, several you know, people to get, you know, get together and they go and do their shopping at one time. One drives one week, one drives the next week, you know, and that way you can uh, take care of it. Uh, so yeah. Hey, Christy. Christy Betts is in the house here, folks. <laughs> How he said, yeah, several. There have been there have been a lot of memes on Facebook and going around about people doing ho horses and stuff. And what's funny is in Texas, people ride horses anywhere where he's in certain areas. Yeah. And Anthony said, Anthony's got got the the new. Uh, his new daughter there, he's uh, a girl dad now. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> the more she, the older she gets, the you know, the, the easier it is to take care of her out in the garden. And Tennessee Tactical is in the house. How you doing, my friend? All right. Uh, yeah, and so uh, for me here, I... I'm rethinking it. I got, I'm, you know, my wife's and I are talking about whether I'm, I'm going to send me out, reuse all the uh, raised planter beds and um, pots and stuff I have up here. I was planning on cutting back because I was planning on making more trips to California, but now the gas prices have gone up and at an 843 mile trip one way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's going to cut, cut that back. So it's one of those things that you just got to think about what are you going to do for your garden um, with the prices so high? And the other problem, too, is with the gas prices going so high, there is a, a, a dramatic increase in shipping costs. And so for grocery stores, their prices are going up to cover the, the fuel costs, the uh, lumber, uh, you know, 80, um, Lowe's, Home Depot, 84 Lumber, all those companies are raising their prices because, A, lumber gets uh, shipped by truck from the, where they're logging it, down to the mills. Then it gets shipped from the mills to the, um, to the distribution centers. And then from the distribution centers goes out to all the stores on truck. And then, you know, so, I mean, prices up here at um, at the at Home Depot here in Idaho Falls, it's like I about had a coronary when I went went in to get a couple two by fours. It's like, wait a minute, these things used to be a dollar eighty nine five years ago, and now they're like you know seven bucks. It's like, what the heck? Hey, Tammy, Rebel Canners is in the house, and Maccabeus Everyday Survival is in the house as well. Woo -hoo. And so a lot of people that hadn't been thinking about gardening are now thinking about it. Uh, some of my friends on Facebook have been commenting about the prices going up there in the San Francisco Bay Area. And it's like, uh, yeah, um, he, that all that big grass player you have in the backyard, uh, you may want to put it and start uh, putting a garden in there. And the other thing adding to all this as well, even though you want to try to expand your garden, um, I know up here we're looking at dr uh, drought um, conditions up here in Idaho because uh, we had a we had a fairly uh, wet December and then nothing. I uh, then I had a little a little, a little uh, an inch or two here, an inch there of snow, and that's it. 
I mean, it's been, you know, since um, my, the last video I did where I had a, had, a, you know, like 15 inches there total. Uh, so the snow's all gone. And there he is, the apartment prepper, fat man prepper. I did not get no notification from YouTube. Uh, yeah, I know. Oh, and then, you know, and also, if anybody's wondering, uh, there's been a lot of problems with computers today. I've noticed it on mine, too. There is a lot of geomagnetic storm hitting the Earth from fol following the CME that hit last night. And that was only a Class C, which is a small CME, hardly even noticeable. But the uh, uh, geomagnetic uh, uh, wind burst came out uh, about uh, 20 hours after the CME, and it caught up to it, and it's hitting Earth today. All right, so what are we oh, talking yes. about today? Uh Anthony, oh, yeah, I know. Um, we've been having a lot of winds around here, and but all the guys, all the people around here have been wrapping the trunks of their trees to keep the sun from warming the tree trunks so they don't blossom. So we're talking about how gas is going to, you know, price of gas is going to affect your gardening. Is it going to expand it? What are you going to do? But, uh, yeah, a lot I'm of going to start. I'm going to fart in canning jars and can it. And sell it on the internet, right? <laughs> right. No, hell no. I'm going to use that. <laughs> but the uh, a lot of my friends on Facebook and stuff are, and have been you know, talking about starting to do a garden. And I tell them, all right, it's not too late. You need to get out there now because it, it's warm enough to do it there. But the problem is, um, in California, usually my wife does not have to worry about watering her garden in January, February, or March. Uh, the second week of January, she had to start watering her plants out there because there was no rain. So, yeah. All right. Gardener Josh. He's expanding to around 4,000 square feet. Yes. Um, Howie said he doubled his. Uh, his his thing his food forest up there now uh, on Victoria Island. Okay, Anthony spent two days getting the corn <laughs> plot ready, expanding it from last year. Oh. And uh, oh, Anthony Slucky, his uh, his apples hadn't opened yet, so uh, he's gonna have uh. At least that may save his apples so long as he doesn't get out of the wind storm as soon as they open up. Uh, all right, Kaylin. Hey, Kaylin. Kaylin says, if you don't have seeds or starter plants, get them while the getting's good. Definitely. Um, you're, there's going to be a run on plants, folks. Uh, with the gas going up this, this fast, if you don't have your seeds, you may be short. Uh, so tomorrow, hey, Go get your seeds. Yes, it may be an extra trip, but um, if you can get the seeds you need and um, get a garden, get your gardening go going, that'll be great. Oh crap, Anthony! The wi the wind bent down half of his wheat. So, yeah. Uh, so, Ray, how how is gas prices going to affect what you're doing? Are you going to expand what you're doing there in the, in your apartment, or no? Because I drive so little as it is, it's an inconvenience, but it's not something that is going to overly affect me. Okay, uh, I got a question here from Tennessee Tac Tactical. All right, do I agree on two years on fruit bushes to produce and four years to be a de decent harvest like a blueberries? Um, that would be a question for my wife, but I do know for the blueberries she planted, the first year she planted them, she didn't get any. Same thing with the raspberries. Second year she got a little bit. Third year she got more. And this will be the fourth year for the blueberries, and I've and she the the the, um, the, ra the raspberries are doing what they're doing. And since I don't eat raspberries, I don't pay attention to them. 
but she and my uh, youngest son go after the raspberries and the blueberries. I know for trees, fruit trees, you're looking at if you buy them in the in the um, either bare root or in the five gallon bucket, you're looking at um, five years for a decent production unless you get a dwarf uh, or ultra dwarf where they'll start producing sooner. Or unless you um, can trick them into producing by doing some grafting. But generally, all, all, all the fruit trees we've had, it's, you know, we start getting some, you might get one or two apricots or peaches or something on year three, get three or four of them on year four, and then year five, we got go. two dozen, then three dozen, then, you know, the, then holy crap, the tree is loaded, the branches are breaking, what do we, you know, and we're just propping them up with two by fours, yeah. the branches from breaking. But yeah, um, trees take a uh, take. It's an investment. It's an investment. It takes years to do, but when they start producing, you got a lot. Uh, yeah, and uh, Kaylin, one of the things you can do is if you have the seeds and you get them started into little little sprouts, and you and you can trade off a sprouted rooting tree. That's, uh, you get a little bit more for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the uh, apple trees, the Granny Smith and the um, Fuji my wife has. <coughs> <coughs> We've been pruning the heck out of it. And those, I mean, those, they're, you know, you know after, after 12 years, I mean, those things, I mean, she's she's given away during the year hundreds of pounds of apples. Hundreds of pounds she gives away. And so, um, yeah. And that's if you have a tree that can produce like that, you have you have a you have uh, money in the bank right there. All right, just get it. it depends on trees. Some tree. Uh, yeah, uh, and that's the thing. You've got to find out on the type of tree you have how to prune it. And because not all trees prune the same. Uh, my wife read one article when she first planted her Granny Smith and her Fuji, and it was prune everything outside and keep it up tight. And I kept telling her, uh, that's not going to be a good idea. That's not going to be a good idea because my grandmother had apple trees when I was growing up. And then she's realizing after after. Uh, seven years, she was realizing crap, and then so we've been slowly trying to bend them out to get more more space in them, without breaking it, and then you know you know putting the uh, the, the uh, straps kind of pull on the one side and board to push up and get so it comes up more of a open space in the middle, and now they're even producing even more. Hey, Southern Blessed Homestead, how's it going? Hey, Texas Rob, good to have you in here. And, uh, yeah, so it all depends on your location, the type of tree you have, and how well it's going to produce, depending on what you do with it. Um, the, your best resource, don't go off of YouTube for so show, showing you out. Uh, this, this is the only way you can prove it. No. Check with your local um, community Arbor. college if, if they have a um, horticulture department, because that's right there in your county. Then your next source up is for your uh, your state university system. Um, what's it, not outreach? Um, I forget the name of the program that the uh, universities have um, for you know. They got all sorts of stuff, all sorts of stuff you can download on PDF format about pruning, planting, and all that stuff. Plus, they have a, a helpline you can call in. Most of them have a helpline you can call in to talk to them. Extension service. Thank you. Kaylin, I knew I could count on Kaylin. Kaylin is a great resource. Extension service. And yes, Emma. Hey, Emma. Uh, nut trees. Um, one of the, uh, or uh, we got some walnut, walnut trees there in California are coming up, small ones. Tried planting one here and things didn't go on. So we're, 
My wife's uh, trying to get a decent size one for me so I can try planting it up here. And we're going to try to protect it a little bit better. You know, stack some uh, straw bales around it so it doesn't, you know, freeze to death as bad as it, you know, as it did. You know, keep the, keep the ground warm. It was doing the first couple of years. It was doing okay. But when I re- did the, the um, irrigation ditch and leveled the dirt out around it, and it, all of a sudden it was sticking up a little bit higher than we wanted it, and it, it froze hard. Yeah. Um, so, you know, what uh, she's doing to make sure that the t- tap root doesn't get into the ground and we break it off. She's got a, a tall seven gallon bucket, put it in and she, she has a plastic saucer under it. So if, if the root does start to come out, she can, uh, it's not going to get into the ground. And if it starts to come out, we know time to ship it up here and plant it. Uh and this guy had uh, pecan trees. Uh, Tammy, it's even better than that. We just let the squirrels around around our place, you know, because they go because across the street there's about seven big uh, walnut trees, uh, English walnut on top of the black walnut uh, root, and they're bringing those uh, those stupid walnuts over and planting them in my wife's garden all the time. They're always coming up. Yeah, good point, Anthony. And we, you figured that in that one, when the time is up about two and a half to three feet is when we'll be planting it. Now, one of the things, you know, like I said, because I'm not going to be going to California probably as much. And I froze again. So I'm not going to be moving all my uh, as much stuff up this year as I'd planned on. Um, I'm pr- probably looking at um, maybe actually doing some more um, tomatoes outside in the um, the raised planter beds. I know I'm going to be doing a lot more. A lot of I've just did a whole bunch of more onions. I started chitting onions, chit c h i t. Uh, of of the um, uh, the, the the big yellow onions, I forget the name of it. Not the Walla Walla's, the other ones. And so I got a hundred of those that are chitting right now. And when they start popping up, I'm going to start uh, putting them in into the, the soil cups so that I can put them outside once the soil's uh, warmed up enough in the raised planter beds, and start getting some onions go- going out here. And um, I got a, uh, my wife is uh, on our first her next trip up here. She's supposed to be bringing me some garlic that we're going to wait until September to plant. So it'll, you know, we, it'll, it says it works better up here. You plant it in September and then in, in the spring, it comes back up and it's all good. Um, okay. This is, I'm just catching up on the side chat, seeing what's going on here. Okay. Hmm. One of the things, too, is that um, what was I say? onions, garlic. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try planting a few more um, cantaloupe probably this year because I'm not going to be making as many trips. And I got, I've got to figure out how to water it good. So, you know, over last year's learning what, waters, what watering system works and what doesn't, hopefully I'll have, have a lot of... Um, um, Cantaloupe as well. That'll help, you know, because you know, you know, it'll help my my budget a little bit. It'll help my daughter's budget a lot because with four grandsons over there who love cantaloupe and watermelon, it, you know, they won't have to be buying other stuff from the grocery store. Well, with the current prices the way they are for gas and fertilizer is going to go up. Have you planted any cash trees yet? What do you mean? Oh, cash trees and money trees? No. Yeah. Gotta yeah, get on that, you know. Yeah, I just uh, have been keep, I have been keeping an eye out for that winning lottery ticket blowing around on the ground every time I go into Idaho Falls. Keep an eye out for it. Oh, carrots is something else I'm going to try in the race planter beds this year. So hopefully, um, 
I, you know, I'll be uh, topping off of all the, the huge compost pile I did over the winter. And what's interesting is the compost pile is nice and warm because the snow don't stay on it very long at all. That's when the thing <coughs> gets in the shade. One of the first places the snow disappears is off the compost pile. That's a good sign. Well, yeah, any snow that accumulated on it throughout the year provided insulation to help keep it warm and keep those microbes chomping away. Yeah, well, the, 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 the pile out here, the compost pile, is at least four feet tall and about 12 feet wide and about 18 feet long. Uh, back in uh, October, I did a turning on it to get you know, all the turn all the fresh stuff, all the grass clippings on top. I turned that all in, and there are worms going everywhere on it and mm -hmm. back down in. So I know it's uh, doing good stuff there. Hey, prep for eternity. How's how you doing, Reverend? Well, I got to take these dogs out, so I'll be back. All right. Oh, Come and on. Uh, Kat, uh, uh, Caitlin has a great uh, idea. Thrift stores, people, thrift stores, you can get a lot of stuff at thrift stores, but you also have to be careful. Um, I forget who it was, was posting on one of the, one of, one of the uh, chats. They went to a thrift store to get, uh, uh, see if they had canning jars and they wanted more for the canning jars than what they could go over to Walmart and buy them new. So, and the, and the new, new ones at Walmart came with lids and rings. Do I see a run on banks coming? I I am not a financial expert, but I follow several good you know ones that hey, I've been pretty good on it. Um, right now, Economic Ninja has been uh, a lot of his stuff. We've been talking about silver and stuff and the other problems. I don't think there's going to be a run on banks per se. Um, but the problem is, with there are some banks that are that are making people think there's going to be a run. Uh, several of the banks are closing down some of their branches because they can't get people in there. They can't hire people to work in the branch in the banks, and so they're having to consolidate them because of staffing, not because they don't have the money. It's because they can't get the workers. So, I mean, that's one of the things, uh, you know, that most people misinterpret about, you know, when they say, oh, the bank's closing, something must be wrong. Well, no, um, the amount of, amount of transactions being done in person at that bank doesn't meet the uh, overhead balance for staffing it. And the fact that they can't staff it causes them to shut things down. Uh but yeah, I know the, um, all right, in Idaho Falls, there were two branches for Chase Bank. One is a big, you know, standalone structure. The other one, they, you know, a lot of the Fred Myers around here, they have a whole bunch of different things, you know, little mini stores. And they had a, a, br a branch for a uh, for Chase there. And that closed down a year and a half ago. So, because there just wasn't that much foot traffic in it, they thought more people would be using it to have it in there. And one of the other local banks here in Idaho took over that spot. And so, but, uh, and Christy says, yeah, you know, her bank started cutting back on te tellers, you know, several years ago. And the problem with, with that is, I mean, that's a kind of a two edged sword. When they cut back on the tellers, because the overhead doesn't justify what the traffic, the in-person in, in traffic is, they cut, start cutting back, and then people go in there, and they, uh, they get stuck in a long, and they're like, oh, crap, I'm just going to bank online. And they only go in there when they absolutely have to go into the bank. And so that, that per, uh, precipitates them cutting back another teller. And then does it again, and they cut back another tell. And then all of a sudden, they're down to bare bones operations. And then, you know, you know what happened here with the Red Dragon? All of a sudden, they're going elsewhere. So they're finding better employment elsewhere, and they can't get anybody in there competent to work. So, yeah. And that's right, uh, Southern Bless. It's getting. 
you know, everything, everybody's going electronic, which is kind of easy for us. Sometimes the electronic stuff just sucks trying to get stuff done. Um, and you got to go in to d deal with it. Not and, to mention if you forget your passwords. Yeah. I um, don't. Well, the thing is that too, when my, my wife, um, for, because we have, uh, several, we have a couple different accounts and the, um, the Chase Bank was hooked up through my cell phone. The, um, um, crap. Let's see the other one here. Hang on. Pull out the, pull out the ATM card and see what the other bank is. I hardly ever use it. The uh, Bank of the West is on her card. Her, I mean, on her cell phone. So she can do, she does a lot of the banking with the Bank of the West because she clears the, um, the memory cache on her computer every time she shuts down. And so when she uh, goes in, they, you know, they, they want, oh, we new computer, we got to send you it. They don't, they don't keep the recognition of the computer on their side. They're waiting for that ping back from your computer to say, oh, yeah, we've been in here before. So she's got to do the uh, multiple point um, login stuff. And so they got to send the text. They got to text to her, her cell phone the, the special six digit passcode to, um, to authenticate, you know, that the person's using it. Hey, Taylor, how's it going? I spent two hours today with the DMV on hold waiting to simply update my phone number so that I could log in online and get a simple 39 month MVR report. Yeah. Well, one of the things I, I really, I mean, this is to me, this is uh, the epitome of, stu of stupidity. Retired from the federal government, the first federal uh, retirement, federal employee retirement system. I can go in and I can just go in and I froze. I can just go in and say how much uh, state tax I want to pay, how much federal tax I want to come out of my retirement. My thrift savings, I can go in and I can change my federal, but I can't do my state. They, you know, I have to, I have, to uh, have them send me or I have to find where they have it hidden on their website, the form, fill it out, take it down to a notary, Get it notarized that I signed it and send it into them. If I want to increase my the state, my state tax is coming out. It's you know it's like it's almost at a point I'm getting with my wife and say, hey, let's just pull everything out and put it in a some other type of um, investment where it's not tied to the stock market. Uh, well, I understand that you can buy rubles really cheap right now. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Hey, what's what's what is what what is uh um the uh, uh uh Ukraine? What's their monetary? Is there's your rubles too? I think they're on rubles. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> for the guard for guarding though the price of the, the prices of gases, I mean it's just like this is the first time where I've actually I, I've noticed that there, there was one. Uh, station up the road here in Shelly that it's a, it's a more of a big terminal with all the big trucks pulling stuff, but they have di on road diesel and off road diesel. Well, I'm you know, since my, my one tractor is diesel, I'm thinking about going up there tomorrow and um, filling up all my diesel cans. I got I got six five gallon diesel cans and going, going up and actually getting the off road diesel. I'm not sure how much cheaper it is, but you know, it's going you know, if it's if it's a uh, percentage rate, yeah, it's going to be a lot cheaper to get that than it is the uh, than the gas station right across the road here. Well, uh, one thing to remember with gardening and fuel is, for the most part, Gardener Josh, you are an exception to this. For the most part, anything that you can use motorized gas using implements for, mm -hmm. you can use your hands. They have tools that have been used for hundreds of thousands of years that require absolutely nothing more than elbow grease. Yeah. 
Yeah, unfortunately, for the five acres I have across the road, I okay, ain't you're doing you're an exception to. I mean, well, no, in your case, maybe pick up a donkey, uh, an ox or two, maybe a horse. Not until you know. I mean, that's the thing. It's not until I get it where it's producing the alfalfa where I can use. <laughs> yeah, the ox or the donkey or whatever. Yeah, exact, exactly. Uh, that's one of the reasons I retired when I did. All right, from my house in Martinez to my office was 31 miles, the quickest route to go. When I had to be at work at 4 o'clock in the morning, I could get there in about 28 minutes. Coming home in the afternoon, 10 hours at, later, it was anywhere from an hour and a half to a three-hour hour commute coming home. And that was just, you know, just, just, just total nerve-wracking. I mean, I was developing an, an ulcer just from the traffic. And those that are still driving that way, you know, having to drive you know, hours in the traffic... Oh man, they're, they're, they're going to be screaming out there, you know, world, when they get their uh, their credit card bill for buying all the gas. One thing is, slow your row when you're driving. There's no need to be speed demon. You're not saving any extra gas. Uh, I don't like these damn these new cars that turn off the literally shut the engine down. When you come to a stop sign or a stoplight and then restart it because you're burning more gas every time you restart your engine. You're burning more than what you would just letting it run. Depends on the time. If you're going to stop more than 30 seconds, yeah. If you're going to be, I mean, if you're going to stop less than 30 seconds, you're, you're going to, it's start shutting off and starting again, yeah. If you're going to be sitting there and it's not like some of the uh, signals I used to sit at, Timed it. It was a just about a five friggin' minute minute signal because it had it had two left turn lanes for every direction. It had three straight ahead lanes for every direction, and traffic was backed up half a mile behind that. Also, check your tires. Make sure that they're properly inflated. A low tire, even by a pound, is going to equate in gas. Yeah. And actually, um, the like say it says thirty five. It says it'll say like um, thirty two to thirty five pounds psi maxima. If you do the research on it, that is the comfort setting. You can actually go several pounds over that. Yeah, it's not a smooth ride, but you get a lot better gas mileage because a but soft, squishy tire burns up more gas than a hard, rigid tire. You want to make sure all your tires are at or right about the same level. You don't want one low tire and three uh, bumpy tires. I'll call Gil's uh, yeah. tire inflation bumpy tires. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, Brother Donnie, the, um, when you say L.A., we're talking about Los Angeles. It's more than just Los Angeles. Where I lived in California was Northern California, the San Francisco Bay, <coughs> over in Contra Costa County. And driving into Oakland, not even in San Francisco, into Oakland and back out into the suburbs there, 31 miles was got pretty freaking right. insane, especially since I had to go through the Caldecott Tunnel. I mean, there was there was no way unless I want to spend another hour driving up the, the, the back roads over the over the uh, ridge there, the Oakland Hills to get in. Yeah, it yeah. Was bad there. Avoid as much as possible driving through during rush hour. I mean, here here in Phoenix, I'm 10 miles from my home office. I can go there in the morning, and it only takes me 15, 20 minutes. The return trip, however, is about an hour to an hour and a half. If you're at all possible, stay away from rush hour traffic. Yeah. And... Um... Like, all right, my oldest son, who is, let me do the math here real quick. All Pretty right. bad, Gil. Yeah, you I don't know. know the age of your kids. All right. He was born in 96, so do the math from there. 
uh, he's got a job, uh, uh, you know, really close. I mean, he actually walks to work sometimes. When my wife is up there, he has to walk to work. Um, he's on the he's on the graveyard shift. He gets there at eleven o'clock at night. Gets off at seven in the morning. Even if you were driving, there are no traffic. It's a three. It's three miles from home to where he's at. And so, um, yeah. I hate and, to say it, but utilize public transportation as much as possible. Well, I mean, to, all right. He could walk down to the bus stop. It would go one stop. He'd have to get off the bus stop to walk up to to the Walmart. <laughs> yeah, it's a, to me him. It's not worth it. He can actually take the shortcut through the. Uh, well, for um, some people, it, it, it is. It's a lot it, it is worth it. I mean, you consider you're spending thirty dollars for a monthly bus pass, approximately, yeah. give or take, and that thirty dollars is going to get you to and from work. Whereas driving it, you're probably going to spend thirty dollars a week. Yeah. Yeah, I and mean, that's the thing is, you know, there's, you know, there are a lot more people that I've seen when I've been up in Idaho Falls pushing those little. Uh, I call them the, the, the homeless old lady baskets. <coughs> Not a shopping cart. It's a little collapsible one. They put all the groceries in. Yeah, I know what you're talking I've seen about. More, I've seen more of those around when the sun's out now than I've ever had before. And I know that's going to be a, a that's going to be a big thing going on in California there. Uh, and CR is right. You know, don't spend 15 minutes driving around the parking lot. Just you know, you know, park either a block away or park out the far side of the parking lot and walk in. Hey, I prefer doing that all the time just because less door dings. Yeah. Yeah, I've been uh, trying, you know, I was, we were thinking about uh, getting my, uh, my oldest son says he does not drive. He does not drive at all. Um, he doesn't like to drive. And uh, I was getting one of those uh, three wheeled bikes adult bikes with a basket on the back, but we figured out, uh, you know, it, it's Walmart, even though Walmart is in a nice, the Walmart is in a nice area. Um, it's still, you know, the, the, the little <coughs> shops in that thing that have, some of them attract some not so savory characters. And at nighttime, we suspect someone would try to steal that and be, you know, some of the punk kids in the neighborhood would try to steal it and, or just slash the tires on it. So, we haven't even tried getting him to do that, but uh, okay. So if you have a driving job like me, try to use that time to get some of the small stuff you need. He delivers to store, so yeah, okay. So he's delivering, he delivers up for work, and does a little shopping on the side. Smart. Well, this job that I'm about to take, the reason I had to contact the DMV, it's going to be a little hard to pull up to. Uh, walmart in a street sweeper you know and do some grocery shopping yeah we have a public transportation out here it's called the police car <laughs> hey you buy shubaroos for a reason you might as well use them they're not there to make your feet look good yeah so um yeah that's one of the things, and some people I've actually saw complain. Oh, the price of gas is getting so high, I can't run my rotor tiller. I want to know is how big of a thing they have that they're you know, running the rotor tiller because the rotor tiller has that little small gas tank on it. And um, my grandmother's place was an acre and a quarter, but only <coughs> about a quarter of it was actually a garden area, and we just and you know, one gas tank we'd go, we could rotor till that whole thing. Yeah. So, uh, oh, wow. it's probably yeah, using up maybe a half a gallon of gas. Less, if that. Yeah, yeah. more more like a third or a quarter of a gallon. And uh, big quart. Okay, yeah, more like a third of a gallon for that little gas tank on it. But yeah. So, um, if you have, if you don't have a garden in there, you have friends, face. Even Facebook friends that are complaining about the cost of gas and grocery and stuff say, hey, have you thought of planting a garden? Just think of all the, you know, you could save on trips to the store and you could probably, if you grow a lot of one thing, find someone else that's grown something else and just trade. You know, For those that have uh, 
bug out bags or you haven't cleaned out your car, also clean out the car. Get rid of the garbage. Get rid of the extra weight. Yeah. If you have a bug out bag, it's time to condense that to bare necessities. Yeah, a bug out bag really shouldn't be in your car. A get a small get home or bag. Or get home bag, I'm sorry. Yeah, a get home bag, yeah. But uh, it's time to go through that and double check what are the absolute necessaries. Yeah. And get rid of all the fluff. Because that extra weight, again, extra weight in that vehicle, your car's got to work harder. It's going to burn more fuel. Yeah. And once again, high, uh, low air pressure in your tires causes you to, um, your gas mileage to go down. You inflate the tires, a firmer tire gets better gas mileage. But be careful. I've actually, I wasn't paying attention one day and went to go fill up my tires and I wasn't paying attention and time kind of slipped away from me. Next thing I heard was a big boom. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't put a hundred pounds pressure in a, in a tire. It's supposed to have, you know, 35 pounds. Well, you know, I had one of those gill moments where I just kind of sat there and froze and just went yeah. blank. Yeah. Fortunately though, with uh, my air compressor, when I have it, you know, Turn, turned up to the setting, I usually count one 1,001 1 pounds, one, two 1,002 1, pounds, and it puts the, ga the air in that much, so I can just count it off fairly oh, quick. One other thing, y'all, because I know many of you don't do it, because I didn't until a couple years ago, rotate them damn tires. Look yeah. up the proper rotation. You can do it yourself in about 20 minutes. If and you're you, lazy, you can get the gas station to do it for you. And if you bought your car, uh, bought your tires at Les Schwab, they will <coughs> come in free. They will rotate and they will check the balance on them. Free. And if I uh, like if you're up here where you swap out summer tires for winter tires, they do free you know, swap outs for you. It's one of the services that are free. Uh, okay, just checking on everything else here. All right. So one of the things, you're expanding your garden. Great. If you don't have a garden, start a garden. Check with some of the ones that are putting in new gardens, the channels that are where they're talking about, actually showing you how to garden and doing stuff and the things they're doing. And, of course, check out the Green Wizard to make sure you're doing your soil healthy and safe without chemicals. Uh, Ron over there is, is great. In fact, I put on my community tab uh, uh, thing. He has a new um, um, blog he's doing. Every Saturday morning he loads up a uh, new episode Episode two is available right now to look at. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can get, if you get uh, your garden growing right, it'll produce a lot the nat nature's way, not with all these chemicals and stuff. But if you if you can get yours going, try to get some of your neighbors to plant a garden too. A, you have someone to barter with because they're probably going to plant. They may plant a lot of things the same, but they may plant something different. Two, if you get a lot of people in your area growing a garden, then you talk to, talk to them about doing carpooling to the grocery store to save money. And what do you do? You're building a community out of a neighborhood that's been standoffish to their neighbors. And so that always helps out. Uh Okay, to see what. Uh, okay, I'm just checking up here with Dig, Dig's comments there. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and if people look at you crazy, like, what do you mean? I'm going to rob something. It's like, oh, that's why you get shot dead. But if you grow a garden, you save a lot of money. And if you grow a lot of stuff, you have a really producing garden. Guess what you can do? Most towns have some sort of a flea market or a farmer's market. If you have extra, sell it at the farmer's market. Not only that, but it's a good time to learn how to start canning, how learn how to dehydrate. And uh, Brother Donnie has a good point there. Um, 
if your if your church has that extra property, talk to them if they don't and they don't have it, talk to them about using some of that extra property for doing a, a community garden for church members or check either your community, see if there's any county or city owned property that is not being used and turn it into a garden. And you know, if you can if you approach the right council member or a supervisor or whatever and get them on board with it, you can be surprised what things you get done. <laughs> Very bad. <clears throat> all right. That's all. I'm just going to laugh at that. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> uh, the Italian bodies kind of leave the food a little greasy. I'm just saying. Being Italian, I can say that. Hey, I'm I'm Heinz 57. I'm related to every royal family in Europe on my mom's side. I haven't even done that far enough far. Oh, back so your uh, family tree doesn't really branch out very far, does it? <laughs> no, it branches out all over the place. All these, all the ones, you know, all over the place. It's like, you know, wow, okay. So I'm I'm related to the fifth son of the King of England, not the first or second son, the one that got kicked out and. Uh, I became a duke, and then he had twelve kids, and the twelfth kid of that one, so all of a sudden I'm out of royalty. But hey, <laughs> so you know, five hundred you know royals die, you might become royalty. Yeah, yeah. What was, what was that movie? Uh, King Ralph. <laughs> right there, you go. <laughs> so if the entire royal family dies out, I can tie myself back into Eleanor of Equitaine, uh, Prince John, and a few others. I would not want to go over there, though. All right, uh, let me check, bring up one last thing in, last couple of minutes, pull up the thing. All right, so tomorrow night on Gray Man Prepping, uh, the topic uh, for Tactical Tuesday is we're going to go over, I'm going to go over the types of prepper groups. And because people have been asking this question again, you know, you know, what are the types of prepper groups? What's good, bad, bad about them? So I got a presentation for that, and we're going to go over that uh, tomorrow night. And so that's what's going on there. Now well, I'm looking forward um, to that. Hey, oh, they all, they just started live here. Um, Two Family Homestead is going live. They're back doing their lives again. And they're starting a couple minutes early here. And let me see if I can find it here. And I'll just throw it. Uh, shoot. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Trying to get it here. All right, come on, computer. Uh, it's lagging because of the stuff going on. Uh, two family, there it is. Short stream tonight. All right, they got eight watching. Here is the link for two family homestead. I'm going to throw it in the middle <coughs> chat here. There is the link for two family homestead. I will see you guys over there. All right. So, as always, everyone stay happy, stay safe, plant a garden. And I will see you uh, tomorrow night on Gray Man Prepping.